Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Hawkblad Alara and I hope you all are doing okay. I am back with another episode of my sketchbook session series. I always love getting into a conversation with you guys that this personal series allows and I'm just happy to be here again. The year is coming to an end and I think for most of us this includes melancholic, nostalgic, inspired and or hopeful feelings. For me personally it's always a wild mix of emotions that I oftentimes have trouble with identifying or understanding how they are able to coexist at the same time. It's always a weird time to be indirectly and willingly forced to reflect to what has been happening. Each year I look back and realize there's so much stuff that changed this year, took forever, while also thinking, wow, I achieved nothing this year, everything happened so quickly, and it's just strange, guys. Time is a weird concept, and the more I think about it, the more I am convinced of the theory that time isn't linear. But we're drifting away from what I actually want to talk about. I want to talk about what this year brought to me art-wise but also generally related to life and I welcome you all to share your experiences, achievements and lessons of this year down below in the comments. Let's chat about how crazy existing as a human being can be. So lean back, get comfy or get your sketchbook and let's reflect a little about what this year brought to us and what has been happening. Starting off with January, where I came to the conclusion that I want to change my life to the better. I was sick of the burnt out and depressed situation I was in and just wanted to change after years of personal suffering with my closer coming graduation in June. I made the decision that I want to go past my trauma that I've been hiding and pushing away since years. I decided to reconnect with a lot of things that I had bad memories with and try to override them with positive experiences. For example, I rewatched a lot of series and animes that I connected with my past abusive partner which helped me a lot to let go of the negative associations by just overwriting those memories with new ones in a safe environment. I also played video games that were bound to the same curse. As I mentioned for the millionth time on my channel before, January was also the end of an era that was part of me for the bigger part of my teenage years. I quit or paused sharing my art on Instagram, which was and still is a big cut into what I used to do and how I used to perceive my art. It's crazy how much Instagram shaped my artistic journey. While it kept me super creative and engaged with my art, it also made me hate a lot of works of mine and let me doubt a lot if what I was doing was really quote unquote right. But I've made enough videos about this topic so I don't want to bore you with it again. My start of this year overall was fueled by the desire to change positively and to accept change. While I wasn't entirely able to internalize the latter one yet, I think, no, I know that I was able to achieve the first one. But it was also fueled by the fear of what is ahead of me. What will I do after I graduated? Will I find a job that fulfills me? Am I even able to work? Especially the last question was a question that taunted me a lot because until then my illnesses held me back from learning a lot of everyday life stuff. I wasn't able to go by bus or train or go grocery shopping alone, let me even exist outside of my home without panicking. I wasn't really able to navigate basic human tasks due to my severe panic and anxiety disorder and potential ASD. But I was ready to confront those fears on my own. I wanted to get ready for living. Starting to practice home stuff like doing the dishes alone or doing the laundry, vacuum cleaning, stuff I wasn't able to do alone before due to my disabilities. I was seeing progress quite quickly and tasks that stressed me out to no end finally started to get easier and now are no issue for me anymore. I was progressing and that inspired me to continue. Sadly, my progress was thrown back by the passing of my childhood cat on the 6th of March at age 23. I miss her like crazy and I still and will love her with my whole heart to eternity, but now I also believe that her passing this year enabled me as well to start a new beginning, a new life, because now I was forced to partially adapt. And while mourning and grieving a loss sucks like shit, it was part of the change I wanted to achieve. 
In April, the preparation for my final started, but I realized that school and studying brought me close to a burned out state as well. The past years of studying during the pandemic, on and offline classes and everything just made me tired in the end. I wasn't able to study without harming myself in the process, so I started not giving a fuck about school anymore. For the first time, I just went loose. I skipped a lot of classes, didn't do shit anymore, but I mean, I did this due to my health. If I would have kept giving a shit, I would have fallen apart. During that time my art was cut short because I didn't have the capacity to paint and finish a lot of fully rendered pieces. I worked mainly in my sketchbook, scribbled a lot and worked on smaller projects. Since I wasn't on Instagram anymore, I wasn't indirectly pushed by the demand that I have to keep posting and so keep making a lot of art. But that was good and appropriate in my situation because I was able to focus entirely on myself. And eventually I graduated in June with grades that I'm more than satisfied with. Now I wasn't bound to school anymore and three months of no appointments or exams were ahead of me. Three months of being able to do all the stuff I wasn't able to do before. I trained even more to be able to do everyday stuff. I trained going by bus. I knew I have to get that done before I started my first job because the job I applied to and was my first choice accepted my application. So I trained going by bus. I went to smaller events to get used to being surrounded by people and strangers and everything improved so much, which is just amazing. I never thought that I was able to improve so quickly on my own without outside help, especially because I was told so many times before that I will never be able to work or be independent and that it would be the best for me to, I don't know how it's named in English, but it's like a disability status that allows me to get an assigned caretaker. It's just so empowering that I step past these verdicts and that is just so nice. During this time I also finally reconnected or started to reconnect with my art in an unhealthy way and mindset. While art kind of was becoming a chore for me, I finally started to have a to have truly fun with painting again. I felt inspired and deeply wanting to create again. I did art again in a healthier mindset and it felt so good. And then I started my first ever job. It started with a lot of emotions, fear, uncertainty, frustration about being alone again, since basically all of my friends moved into other cities or even countries for their future education or jobs and the confrontation with change overall. But also hope, joy, finally being able to experience true everyday life, it's liberating. Obviously it's been very wild for me to get used to a new daily routine, but now I'm very well used to it. I really love going to work now, the colleagues are nice and I already made a very close friend amongst them. How much I love working in that job and how much fulfilling the activities are to me, I obviously have to cut short on the time I am able to work on art. Being forced to take a break from art is a different story than choosing to take a break from art, but it's okay and it's fueling the healing of how I view and feel about my art. Because now making art and having a finished piece is even more special than before. All in all, my year has been including a lot of change and personal growth. Even though I've been just briefly talking about my year now, there's obviously much more that has happened, but I want to keep this video relatively short, so I hope it's okay. I'm just so happy that I've been improving so much within this year and it's making me very hopeful that I'm able to live a fulfilling life in the future. I mean, there will always be challenges and hardships, but I now know that I can handle them and that I will be able to get through my harder days on my own. That is just really great and I hope so bad that I am able to continue this healing process within the next year. Improve even more to maybe consider moving out and living alone or with my partner for the first time. Additionally, I would like to make more art again because the past months I really barely drew anything. Because yeah, I didn't feel like it so it's okay. but. I just want to draw more again, maybe post more again and reconnect a little with posting on social media. I do miss it honestly, I miss the interaction and the motivation to try new things. I do miss it. Otherwise I don't have any big wishes for 2024 other than getting into life more, being human, experiencing emotions good and bad and just 
enjoy what existing as a human being can mean and does mean and what creativity comes from it. I'm excited to what is ahead of me and what I will experience and who I will become. With that, I hope you enjoy today's piece of Veronica. I'm not entirely happy with the final outcome because I haven't been painting with gouache since over two months now and I am a bit rusty if it comes to fine details and I had bad period cramps when painting this and I was shaking a lot so overall I am quite satisfied. I struggled a lot with the red orange tone of her hair. I don't know why, I just did for some reason, but I think it looks cute regardless. As said in the beginning, I'm very happy if you want to share a bit of what has been happening in your 2023. Things you achieved, hardships, whatever you want to share. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I just hope you have a smooth start into 2024. We will see each other again hopefully next week if I'm quick enough with editing and filming what I have planned. So stay safe and stay hydrated.